Hello and welcome to this special podcast focused on resilient distributed enterprise. I am Ankush Kumar, editor of the Tech Observer magazine. I am joined by Mr. Sudhir Nair, managing director, commercial sales, Cisco India and Sark. Mr. Sudhir has over 27 years of extensive experience in business management, sales, partner management and leadership in the technology industry. At Cisco, he leads a high performing team to drive sales and increase adoption of Cisco's product and solutions across the commercial segment. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Sudhir. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Let me begin by asking you, how would you define a resilient enterprise? Uh, look, uh, we all know what has happened in the last nine, 10 months. And before we speak about the enterprise, let's speak a little bit about each of us. Uh, so okay. resilience is the word that I've heard from media, news, and everywhere else the most modern time, but it's very applicable for each one of us. Uh, all our businesses have gone through the change. Our lives have gone through the change. Uh, but look, the one thing that has kept every human being going is resilience or the ability to fight back and adapt. And that is true even for our infrastructure that we all, all belong to. And in my mind, resilience is nothing but that the entire infrastructure that we have, whether it is IT, whether it is decision support, whether it is business support, that has to align with the growing needs and not the other way around. To me, that is the hallmark of a resilient leadership and resilient infrastructure. Absolutely. So, so how is Cisco working towards building a resilient enterprise? Look, this discovery has happened over a period of time, but the last nine months, it's, it's actually taken off completely to a different level. Okay. Uh, let me just start with this example of Cisco's largest customer, which is Cisco itself. Uh, so here in uh, Bangalore, where I stay, we have uh, a, bu a big campus and there are 15,000 employees who work from there. Now, we always hired these people to work out of our campus, right? Five, 10 percent of them before that used to work from home and at any given point of time. But our badging rate was about 89 percent. Three months after the lockdown and once the first lockdown was lifted, uh, our IT team realized that uh, our, our teams is no longer in Bangalore but they are operating from 192 towns in India. Let me just repeat, 192 towns in India. Because people went, whenever they got a chance, they went back to the home hometown and all what you needed was internet and reliable internet to, to get connected. Now that's how drastically the situation has changed. And uh, by doing a number of internal uh, implementations and working with over 5,000 customers that we work here in India, we put all the learnings into a new architecture framework, which we call resilient distributed enterprise, which basically means that it's, it's a complete blueprint and an infrastructure, and it has different parts of it, and it is free for all and applicable for all our customers. They can look into that, they can, they can choose which part of them they want to implement. And fundamentally, there are a few distinct parts of this architecture. Number one is secure remote worker. Like, for example, this is my home office where I'm calling. And the way my CIO puts it is that he's now catering to 15,000 offices because each one of us has a home office at home and we are still working from home. So I need to get access to all my applications on the device that I choose to want to be at when I want to be. At any given point of time, I use about three devices and it has to be 100% secure. So the elements of remote secure worker, the elements of security, and very importantly, keeping our productivity intact is what is the entire principle of this RD infrastructure. And that's really what I'm very happy to announce. It's applicable and available for any one of the Cisco customers who wants to really use it. Absolutely. So uh, since you talk, uh, since you mentioned about the employees uh, working from 192 towns in India, which is phenomenal. So let's let's talk a little bit more about security. Today's organizations are thinking whether to centralize things or to distribute them. With remote work, there is an extreme level of uh, distribution. And as a result, there is a whole challenge of data loss, phishing attacks, and organizations are finding it very difficult to maintain uh, security policies. But centralization is perhaps uh, not the solution as well. Considering even post pandemic, there will be a significant percentage of people working remotely in most organizations. So what is the right solution to security 
for a resilient distributed enterprise? Well, uh, frankly, the world is still evolving around it. And uh, I wish I could tell you that there is something perfectly available. But the security game is all about who is smarter. Is the hacker smarter or are we smart? And they, got, they are getting smarter every single day. While it, there was a lockdown for many of our companies, there was no lockdown for hackers. The number of activity worldwide has increased over. Now, with all this complexity, the number one problem that a typical CISO is facing is that typically they are using somewhere between five to 10 different products or solutions for various organizations. The challenge is not there. The challenge is who puts the integration together? Are you doing a manual integration? If a, if a tool one has identified a breach, is how is the rest of the infrastructure communicated? Is it automatically or is it somebody manually doing it? I'll just give you a small example. I saw at one of my customers' places that they had probably some very good tools and the network part of the infrastructure was identifying a breach, but the network infra infrastructure manager was sending that over a file to the security infrastructure manager. That process was over two hours time. In that two hours, the hacker had a free day. So what I'm trying to bring it is, what, what, it, what everybody needs is a complete framework and architecture which is integrated, automated, automated, and it is intelligent. We talked about all buzzwords of artificial intelligence, but just imagine if we can give our customers a common framework in which they can not only plug in the, the infrastructure that they have bought from Cisco, but also 165 third-party products and solutions around security, and more importantly, an API built-in where they can integrate any other tool of their choice or technology of their choice along with that. And the system is intelligent where it keeps on picking up the trends, it keeps on picking us where is there is a likely breach and keeps on automating based on the policy which has been set by the customer. So I'm very happy to tell you that this is a new infrastructure that we have announced, which is called SecureX. It is absolutely free to all our customers who bought any single security product from us. It offers 165 different products uh, integrated from, off, from the box. Obviously, all Cisco products around security are, are integrated with that. And with the open API, you can integrate anything else. So essentially what it is doing, it is reducing the time of identification of a possibly breach by 81%, and hence your chances of, of resolution also goes up accordingly. So that's something that Cisco has been working on, and the philosophy of Cisco, not only in security, but also in RD, has been, has been simple. That leave the complexity of integrating these various tools and technology to us, leave the complexity of, of putting an implementation layer, a monitoring layer, right, whether it's on cloud, whether it's on on-premise, onto us, so the customer can focus on the end results, what they want to get from security or RD infrastructure, and they can focus on their business. And the complexity of running these tools and technologies can be reduced quite a lot. The cost gets reduced, and they can put take in that cost and invest it back into the innovation that they really want to do. So that's really how RD and SecureX really come together. So since we have come to the last leg of our uh, webinar, what is your message for our readers, especially to the organizations that have begun their resilience journey and are looking for uh, ex to accelerate their um, uh, transformation? Look, I think the first uh, message that I would really want to put forward is to everybody personally. Right? Um, when, please reimagine yourself first. It's very easy for us to go back to business as usual, what we were doing. But so many new implementations of technology has come, innovation has come, and, and more importantly, our way of working has completely changed. So can we take that learning and reimagine will be the first learning. And I think what my favorite word is unlearn to learn. We need to unlearn a lot of old ways that we were taught, and we need to learn new ways. I think that's the first message. The second message is around think very hard about business innovation first. Few businesses have closed down, unfortunately, and a lot of new opportunities have opened up. And it is the technology responsibility to actually align with business and not vice versa. Uh, I think that will be the second key thing. And third thing, which I'm really proud about, and Ankush, not many people talk about it. Uh, I, in, I have interacted with over 2,000 customers in the last 10 months. I don't even know of a single customer in India 
where IT has let the business down. You know, just imagine, I have customers where 16,000 people had to start working from home and they all did that in a week's time. We were responsible in making a lot of this happen along with our customers. So IT has emerged much, much stronger as not only an enabler, but also as an innovator. I think we don't want to go back on this front. And this will, what would mean is trying out new technologies, trying out new skills so that te technology aligns to business and these new needs and vice versa. I think till about five years back, it was basically business aligning to technology. Now, all myths have been broken, all records have been set up, but we should never go back onto the way we were doing things uh, previously, personal life and also in the technology life. And that's really, again, what, what I can assure all our viewers is that Cisco is absolutely committed that the billions of dollars we invest into R&D, uh, like you've seen SecureX, you've seen, you've seen RD, uh, you'll have more and more innovations so that the layers get more and more automated, intelligent, and artificial intelligence gets built in into that, whether it's WebEx, we just announced 51 innovations in WebEx, right? So much so that the biggest issue which comes is the no background noise, right? And my favorite example in India is the noise of a, a cooker in our homes. Now, if you just press the noise cancellation, uh, uh, and we just made an acquisition and integrated that with WebEx, if you just uh, press the noise cancellation on, even the, that voice can be suppressed and only my human voice will be heard. So we're wow. working very hard to come out with the innovations and the objective is very simple. The, it should be as humanly possible for you to work and technology should come in a line. Now you can't take the cooker out of the house, but can we find a better technology to, or at least from the Indian house, maybe in Western houses, you don't use it, right? but we still work in India. So I think those are the innovations that we're really doing. I think I, I would really request everybody to really be very aware about what are the new innovations which are coming and how can they really utilize that and implement that in their own environment. And we are completely committed to work with all our customers. Rightly coined, Mr. Nair. Technology, not as on, only as an enabler, but also as an innovator, uh, has been phenomenal in the kind of uh, uh, exposure that we have seen in the last few months. Um, thank you, Mr. Nair, for sharing your views on the importance of bolstering security, resiliency, and agility for business in the new normal. We look forward to hosting you again. Thank you so much. Thank you.